So I was walking down the street one day, and I saw this wonderful piece of technology. To most people, this is a food cooker. But to me, this is a gold mine for components. Now I've been looking for one of these pieces of garbage for a very long time. And it's a piece of garbage because it's, well, literally a piece of garbage. Somebody threw it out. So once I got the actual casing off, I was greeted with the beautiful sight of several things. The Transformer, the Magnetron, and also the most dangerous part of this machine, the Capacitor. The Capacitor is the first thing you have to overcome when you're entering this machine, trying to take it apart. The Capacitor can store 2,000 volts of electricity for a very long time. It's enough electricity that if you were to touch both prongs, you would just die. There's no saving yourself from that. And then there was this darn pesky screw that just wouldn't come out. Its head was completely flat, and I have no idea how to fix that. So I decided to just execute it with this wonderful piece of human technology. Yeah, that metal makes a pretty awful noise. I, I would like to mention right now that if you're thinking about trying this, don't. These microwaves are capable of instantly delivering a lethal shock. You see, it's not like a power socket. I mean, a power socket is lethal, yeah, but like, this is like 20 power sockets. This is very dangerous. Not to mention that if you break something, it could be even more dangerous. <laughs> I'm talking about the magnetron here, if you if you weren't able to tell already. You probably... What is a magnetron? Oh, don't even ask. We'll get there in a bit, okay? So like I mentioned earlier, one of the first problems if they overcome is this capacitor. So we gotta remove this piece of metal. Ultimately, I just opted to go ahead and just cut the, the leads on the thing. One at a time, of course. Although, I don't think it would have made a difference, and... If it was charged, it probably would have still discharged on me. After wiggling the capacitor a little bit, trying to coerce it out of its hiding spot, I made the decision to remove the metal plate that was in the way. This aided greatly in the, uh, the attempt to remove the capacitor because now I was able to get some more stuff in there and get the thing out. Now, you're probably not unfamiliar with what a capacitor is, but if you are, a capacitor basically just stores electricity. Pretty interesting thing. Pretty common. Of course, you don't usually find them this big, and if you do, they're kind of expensive. One of the interesting components a lot of people take for granted is this actual motor in the middle. This thing can actually be repurposed to generate power. So this is basically an AC alternator. But the way these things work is that they have a magnet in them, and they also have copper coils. And when you power them, they spin. When you spin them, they power things. And I also got this light, but I, I, I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. It's, it's a piece of rubbish. I believe this ceramic block here is a resistor. Now, resistors, what they do is they basically 
allow you to drop the voltage. They can be used in analog computing and stuff like that. It's kind of an interesting thing. They also are pretty good for protecting components. And the way they work is basically they take electricity, they produce heat, which causes it to lose some of its power, I guess you could say. I mean, that's in the simplest way I could say it. I mean, you, you want me to go really complicated where nobody understands it? <laughs> which the interesting thing about a resi resistance is that you can take a very long wire and then you will have a very long amount of resistance. So the little black box I pulled out is a relay. And what these do is they basically use electromagnets to pull a metal le lever in them, which allows them to basically be a switch powered by electricity. These were used in the uh, first computers way back in the day. Of course, the vacuum tubes were also pretty early on, so I couldn't tell you if they were first or if relays were first, so... Another interesting safety component I found in this microwave device are these three... I don't know how to describe them. They're like switches, but they only activate when the door is in position. The, the reason they have these is so that way you don't melt your eyeballs by accidentally turning on the microwave when it's open. So these prevent it from turning on when it's open. There's three of them, just in case. Although, I, I don't know if that's actually why they're there. Uh, that's just a guess. But, it's more than likely the reason why they're there. So my screwdriver was not able to take out the screws on the actual transformer itself. So I had to rip out the whole plate that it was on. And that is uh, not something I would have wanted to do. I wanted to just pull out the screws, then pull out the transformer. No, could not do that. I had to remove the plate later with a better screwdriver. One of the most important components here is this giant spinning thing. This thing is some kind of fan. Now, the reason this is important is because if you don't have one of these in your microwave, your microwave is just going to melt down. It's literally going to catch on fire. And the reason why is because the transformer, all of the components inside there are all going to be giving off a massive amount of heat. Especially in operation when the actual magnetron is running and producing heat on the inside. <laughs> so, you need one of these fans in there. So the screws that hold in the magnetron were uh, kind of stubborn. I had to rip out the whole waveguide, as you can see here. This device is the part that actually cooks your food, makes the microwaves and all that. I won't tell you how to turn it on. And the main reason for that is that if you don't already know how to turn it on, then you shouldn't be turning it on. As... Microwaves aren't really necessarily dangerous to your skin, it's mainly your eyes. If your eyes are exposed to microwaves, then they can easily be damaged. Severely damaged, and it's not really worth it. So the reason we're taking apart a microwave in the first place is so I can get access to this transformer. Transformers are more than meets the eye. There's a lot of useful things you can do with them, most specifically the ability to heat metal, which was my goal with this project, although I'm a little dissatisfied with it currently, and I'm still working on it at the time of this. So in order to make my metal heater, I have to do a few things first. First, I need to lower the voltage. This is a step-up transformer, which means it basically increases the voltage. What voltage is it going up to? 2000. And I don't like high voltage. Uh, that, that's, that's very scary to me. So, we're gonna reduce the amount of windings, and it won't really affect how well it heats metal. In fact, it will make it even better at heating metal. Although, honestly, you could get a pretty nice arc if you just left it at 2000. But don't mess with 2000, it's uh, very dangerous. I'll leave you with a bit of a montage of me just doing this.
I think it's important to note that the drill method was absolutely garbage, so I had to spend a few hours just banging on those uh, things you saw me use earlier. I believe they're called punches. But now I had to test a cable that I could plug into a wall and make sure that I was using the right two prongs. Because there's three wires in this, and I don't know what the wires are, I have to figure it out. So using an LED, I was able to determine that two of the wires were the ones I needed. And it doesn't matter which way they go. Because it's just a transformer, and uh, transformers work both ways, so no need to worry. And then I binded up the wires using uh, just a pair of pliers. Honestly, there's better ways to do this, but this is the best way I thought to do it. And that was finally time to test. Now, if I had done everything correctly, which I believed I had, then I should have been able to melt this nail pretty quickly. But things went wrong. <laughs> so there is supposed to be a humming noise that comes from the transformer. However, the humming was not coming from the transformer. It was coming from somewhere else. So, I plugged it in for like two seconds. Pulled it back out because something was wrong, and I haven't messed with it since. I, I would like to continue working on this and make it better, but I need to find a safe way of testing to make sure this thing is able to function properly.